Velkommen til Films TV. I denne udsendelse bringer vi et kort tilbageblik på den forgangne uges Copenhagen Dogs Film Festival. Vi taler kort om dokumentarfilmfestivalens forskellige højdepunkter, og så vil vi også tale med to af festivalens mest prominente gæster, tunesiske Elias Bakar, som fortæller om filmlandskabet i Tunesien oven på det arabiske forår, samt Jonathan Coet, det visionære geni bag den skilsættende Tarnation. Men allerførst lægger vi ud med et kort og let og forsinket kig på de seneste premierefilm. Jeg vil gerne på et tidspunkt giftes. Julelys, romantik, græntræer og snemand frost. Julen er på trapperne, og det skal selvfølgelig fejres i de danske biografer med et sandt overflødighedshorn af julefilm. Og noget i luften kickstarter årets julefilmsæson med manier. Det er historien om den unge Pernille, som viser sig at være klaverjant, og den jævnaldrende journalist Daniel, som falder pladask for hinanden. Men karikerede ekskærester og andre klichéer skal overvindes, før kærligheden kan blomstre. Især Linda P., Kirsten Olsen og Line Kruse brillerer foran kameraet i denne lille, hyggelige og romantiske julefilm, der kan ses af hele familien, og som man ikke kan undgå at blive i godt humør af. Fire stjerner. The average apartment in the tower costs 5.6 million dollars. We have the best views, most advanced security systems, but you know what these people are really buying? White neighbors. Om sider er det lykkedes instruktøren Brett Ratner at lave en film der både er cool og vellykket. Kub komedien svindel på højt plan. Der er tale om 104 minutters tilforladelig underholdning om en gruppe forsmåede kollegaer, der planlægger at frafriste deres løn tilbage fra en korrupt forretningsmand, som har svindlet alle deres pensionsopsparinger væk. Ensemblet er superb, og alle er i topform. Faktisk har Eddie Murphy ikke været så vetterblagt siden sin storhedstid i 1980'erne, og Alan Alda er dejlig slesk i skurkerollen. Svindel på højt plan er ikke lige frem en skældsættende hejstfase, men det er beundringsværdigt, at en så udskældt instruktør som Brad Ratner har formået at lave en film om finanskrisen, som indbyder os til, og endda får os til, at grine frem for at græde eller græmmes. Fire stjerner. At filmatisere en omfangsrig klassisk roman som Charlotte Bronte's Jane Eyre kan være en stor mundfuld for selv de mest kompetente filmmagere, og derfor har man i denne udgave valgt at fokusere på den unge Eyres skæbne svanger ophold på Thornfield Hall, mens sin sparske fortid på en opdragelsesanstalt primært blev fortalt gennem flashbacks. Tingene blev dog endnu mere indviklet, da hun ankommer til Thornfield som guvernante, og en spirende romance opstår mellem hende og husets herre Edward Rochester. Vi fornemmer hurtigt, at foruroligende hemmeligheder lurer i mørket. Jane Eyre har skuespil i særklasse og en distinkt visuel stil, der både er klassisk og fornyende. Engene er farvedrænet, og inddørscenerne er filmet i klaustrofobisk mørke. Dermed får hele filmen en urovækkende indespærret stemning, og ofte fremstår filmen decideret småuhyggelig med den skotiske look. Filmen er dog først og fremmest en fortælling om kærlighed, der strides med umulige vilkår og sociale konventioner. Men hvor handlingen potentielt ligger op til melodrama og store følelsesudbrud, så holder instruktøren Carrie Fukunaga kortene tæt ind til kroppen og lader kun sjældent følelserne komme til udtryk, hvilket samtidig gør det så meget mere virkningsfuldt, når det om sider sker. Alt er ganske vist ikke fryd og gammel på de engelske sletter, men gotisk romance har sjældent været mere forførende. Fem stjerner. Fra den 3. til den 13. november var Copenhagen Dogs dokumentarfilmfestivalen i fuld sving i København. Adskillige film fra adskillige forskellige nationer blev vist i Københavns biografer, og flere af dem konkurrerede om festivalens prestigefyldte priser, som blev uddelt i fredags. Du kan læse alt om prisoverrækkelsen på www.cbhdocs.dk, og hvis du opstøver vores films tv-udsendelse nummer 31 fra sidste år, kan du høre festivalens direktør, Tine Fischer, tale om, hvordan Copenhagen Docs er gået hen og blevet en af verdens største dokumentarfilmfestivaler. Som altid var der flere gennemgående temaer på festivalen. Det er blandt dokumentarer, der brugte 3D, såsom Werner Herzog's Cave of Forgotten Dreams og Wim Wenders Pina, samt den allerførste danske 3D-dokumentar, Michael Massens The Average of the Average. Derudover var der dokumentarer, der fokuserede på det arabiske forår, såsom den tunesiske Rouge Parole, der skildrer oprøret i Tunesien, der kickstartede hele revolutionen, som stadig gav fuld sving. Vi talte med filmens instruktør Elias Bakar, som var i København for at diskutere sin kritikerroste perle. 
after the 14th of January, I forgot who I am. I mean, I was like uh, uh, living in that kind of chaos, you know, uh, in Tunisia. Um, I was not the director at all. I mean, I was like a citizen, uh, and even I forgot who I am. Even a citizen, I cannot say I was a citizen. I was someone who was like looking to where what's going on. After being on the 14th of January uh, in front of the interior ministry there and said to when I leave the gauge, uh, we were not artists or, or filmmakers, no, we were just Tunisians from everywhere, uh, from all the um, many regions, you know, uh, with the different beliefs. Um, when, they, when they say that Ben Ali has gone, I will say, okay, uh, that's great, but what's next? What's next? And um, I think I've shared that feeling with a lot of uh, Tunisians. I mean, they were a little bit afraid of uh, what's going on next. Are we going to have the military? Are we going to have... what? What's going on? We, we felt great, okay? But we, we had a little bit of anxious, you know? Um, and at, uh, at that time, I said, it's an historical moment. Here, I have to play my role as a filmmaker uh, for the present, but for the future, for the next generation, uh, to tell them, uh, this is what we've been through. This is what happened in 2011 and the 40th of January. And at the same time, to give to the world um, an inner uh, point of view uh, something from inside, because I was a little bit fed up at the same time uh, from the news point of view, you know, it was, it was like very oriented, uh, uh, I mean, not in a political way, but let's say in this dramatic way, in the sensational way. Uh, so, no, um, there were a lack of, a little bit lack of humanity. But this is what is news about. So, um, uh, I want to give uh, uh, the feeling of the revolution. And at the same time, um, to make the audience feel what's going on in uh, in that chaos, the explosion, uh, incredible explosion of the freedom of speech. Everyone was talking about politics. Everyone was talking about uh, new issues, uh, and it was like a, f um, a general. Uh, a big confusion in Tunisia, um, and everyone w wanted to um, to understand uh, and to translate uh, with words what what was happening. So I decided to take my camera without having um, any subject in my mind, but just to go and shoot with feelings. Okay, what you feel, what, and um, step by step the subjects came up, and it became uh, after. Nine, ten weeks, it becomes rouge parole. <laughs> uh, and it took us uh, about four months to, to finish the film in post production after that. Now, of course, the new Tunisia is still taking shape. Of course, that will take some time. But what about the, the Tunisian film landscape? Do you have any sense of that starting to take shape? And what is it taking shape into, would you say? Well, I think um, for the Tunisians, um, filmmakers today, uh, they have a new path in front of them. They have new issues. They have um, also a new relation that they need, really they need, uh, to establish with the audience, especially with the Tunisian audience. Today, uh, the Tunisians say, Degage to Ben Ali, let's go out. Uh, and uh, they can say Degage to everything. Okay, so uh, if you're not 100%, uh, I mean, sincere in what you do, if you don't do it in the positive way, if uh, you're not even creative, you, know, you cannot present something it's like because you're doing films or you, you are a big thing. No, no, they don't really care about it. So um, we have a lot of uh, serious work to do on our set, first of all. What are the stories that we have to... Uh, to to tell, how we will tell them, in which way we will, uh, we will tell them. And at the same time, you know, you have like a, just the, the whole world focusing on your country, focusing on what you're doing now. I mean, you have you had the revolution, that's fine, but you had election, a democratic election. Everyone is looking at us. 
and uh, it's like really um, a good stress actually for me I don't know I don't know for the others but for me it's really great stress you know uh, because um, um, we were waiting for for that for so long to express ourselves in our way and to say uh, uh, that's how we are so let's bring and build new bridges uh, with trust but don't look at me from above I'm not that small I mean uh, country no we had and we made a revolution so let's deal I mean face to face at the same level okay reaching that level we have to be responsible you know responsible of what we say responsible of what we present responsible of what uh, we express and responsible of what we defend Senere fik vi fat i Jonathan Coet, som var på festivalen med dokumentaren Walk Away Rene. Den splinternye film er en slags fortsættelse til Tarnation, Coets debutfilm fra 2004, som skildrede instruktørens forrygte opvækst gennem en overrumplende collage af billeder, lyde, musik og videoklip fra Coets turbulente liv. Hans mor blev chokbehandlet i overvis som barn, selvom det siden han har vist sig, at hun ikke fejlede noget psykisk. Og den ensomme Kuwait voksede op hos misbrugende plejeforældre og med stærk narko inden for rækkevidde. Filmen skildrer hans forsøg på at opnå forsoning med sin mor ovenpå en overdosis, der næsten slog hende ihjel. Tarnation er en rørende og unik genistreg, som ikke ligner noget andet, og som øjeblikkeligt bør opstøves på DVD, hvis man endnu ikke har set den. Walk Away Rene er en enormt rørende og hederlig fortsættelse, som dog ikke er lige så opfindsom som sin forgænger. Vi mødte Kuwait i Cinematiket i København for at diskutere instruktørens seneste værk. What what differentiated this new film Walk Away Rene from Tarnation is I didn't there 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 was still a sort of sense of urgency and catharsis to want to make this new sort of conclusion to Tarnation, but it wasn't to the magnitude that it was when I had made Tarnation. When I when I had made Tarnation it was it was It was a. It, it was more painstaking, and it was. There were some very bizarre circumstances that had surrounded it, and there was a real sort of magical. Uh, there were magical elements that surrounded, like the whole giving birth to that film. Um, with Walk Away, Rene, it was. It was more about wanting to go back in, and sort of revisit aspects of it to kind of evoke. A different dynamic relationship, um, for my you know to kind of put my mother and myself out there in a way that because of running time constraints for Tarnation we weren't able to do and it was certainly more centric towards my mother this follow the conclusion mm -hmm. it's it's an incredible blend of it's almost like this mosaic of different styles and different types of art it's, there's so many different styles but it's also a blend of like reality and and mm -hmm. and, and fiction and fact and so, sure. and so forth. do you see a distinction between those two it's it's a really it's a hot subject here at this festival no i know i know that's this is why cph Ducks is by far one of my favorite film festivals. When I was here, I think like initially four years ago, the lineup I saw was so completely inspiring because it was nothing but doc hybrids. And basically, I mean, what Walk Away Rene is, is in a lot of ways a doc hybrid because there there are reenactments in some places. I don't want to say where, but there are there's just a few sprinkles of it to kind of create glue to put the film together to tell the story. But... Um, that's the lovely thing about making films now is you can sort I think as long as you have a good story to tell and I think as long as you're being truthful I think as long as it's the truth and you let people know it's the truth if you if it's not the truth I think you should let people know it's not the truth but um, in terms of like a documentary with kind of juxtaposed with the, the hybrid thing you know uh, or fictional devices that are sort of interwoven into documentaries um, I think they're totally valid and I, I don't know if that means it's no longer a documentary or if it becomes a sort of kind of a fictional thing i don't i don't know what to really call it i particularly don't like to put things in boxes and labels and i don't know but i i just think as long as you have a good story to tell you you should do it and and use any sort of creative devices and reenactments and cutaways if you need to to make this next shot make sense is you know you, you should do that as much as possible i'm very much into the idea of just like music laying laying sound down also in some places but then even before the picture goes on but then as soon as as soon as i'm laying video down obviously like the 
it's just this kind of simultaneous organic thing. Like I usually start with the music and then lay the video in and and then whatever's, sometimes whatever's happening in the video, I'll start sort of painting things as sort of audio transitions between, you know, image to image. Mm -hmm. I was just sort of making these sort of elongated music video sequences and then we would sort of, you know, make stops in these scenes and then go back to the sequences to kind of go linearly in time. So that was, that, that became the through line, that became the aesthetic for Tarnation accidentally. And uh, I ha hadn't made a movie like that since, except with Walk Away Renee, which goes back to that aesthetic in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I awesome. love sound. Sometimes you can have such a barrage of sound, it'll, it'll resonate in your head and you, yeah, exactly, you don't, you don't know. It could just be evoking some kind of a feeling and you have no idea what it's evoking because it's so, it's not visual, it's not something that's tangible that you can sort of grasp onto, but it's, it's yeah, audio is a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't that sort of therapeutic as well, going, you know, delving into your private life on the big screen with a big audience and doing it several times as well? It must be hard. It is, it is, it is. I, you know, for, well, with Tarn Tarnation and then, the, the, Tarnation was a lot more challenging than I think Walk Away Renee was, because Walk Away Renee, I feel, I feel a little more seasoned in, in sort of doing this, but with Tarnation, it, it was it was certainly an emotional roller coaster um, um, doing this. You know, I was I was kind of waking up in the middle of the night, sort of pondering what it was that I had done, and I still think about that sometimes. I think ultimately, I've created two pieces of work that have um, sort of spawned a gathering of people together, um, particularly people who have mentally ill family members and, and it's just started a long conversation that hasn't stopped and, and I think at the end of the day that's the one big great bit of satisfaction that I could take away from having put these works out. Um, needless to say I don't think I'll ever make another documentary again for a while at least. I'm, I'm really interested in um, uh, making narrative films that sort of mimic documentaries and um, I'm, look, I'm really interested in in horror or psychological psychological mysteries or thrillers but things that kind of delve into very esoteric questions and existential kinds of questions as well. Det var alt for denne gang på Films TV. Vores næste udsendelse er nummer 100 af slagsen, og det fejrer vi med et tilbageblik på flere af vores største episoder samt tidligere usete klip og fraklip. På gensyn. Husk at du let kan finde alle vores Films TV udsendelser på hjemmesiden under Films TV fanebladet. De ligger også i high definition på videovideo.dk, hvor du også kan finde flere udsendelser af Railgun TV, vores web TV program om spilverden. Du kan også læse flere anmeldelser og artikler på films, som du kan diskutere i vores omfattende forum.